Hi guys, it's Lucy. This week I wanted to talk about another great book that I finished reading. Um, it's called In Cold Blood, written by Truman Capote. I first came across this author after looking up Harper Lee after reading um, To Kill a Mockingbird. And it turns out that they were childhood friends in small town Alabama. And that town actually turned out to be Monroeville. And um, the last book, or one of the um, recent books that I read, The Warmth of Other Suns, talks about the um, African American migration out of the American South. And one of the main um, characters being followed in that particular book, um, Dr. Robert Foster, actually grew up around the same time period as um, as Capote and Lee. So I'm, I was just having a small moment fantasizing how uh, way back in the 20s and 30s, um, Capote and Lee were just neighborhood kids playing around, whereas, um, you know, Dr. Robert Foster and his family and his whole community were kind of like like living in a double society because there was very little interaction between the black and white communities. They had, they had their own schools, they had their own um, separate businesses that supported the communities, obviously separate churches as well. So um, Capote came to mind when I was reading about Monroeville and um, Dr. Foster. So when I looked it up, it, this was one of the books that really caught my eye. So this book um, now, talking a little bit more about the subject matter, was published in 1964. So by this time, Capote is very well um, established as a great American writer. Um, but previous to now, I think everything had been fiction or short stories. And this is um, his first or one of the only uh, crime narrative non-fictions out there. So this book, to me, uh, first of all, it does not have a table of contents. It's It doesn't really have chapters either. It's written in, uh, it's split up into four major parts. We're introduced to um, to the crime, the family on their last day, and, and each of them and their lives in general. And then we're introduced to the would-be killers in the second part. And then in the third quarter, um, it kind of wraps up the actual plot or the story and um, the killers get caught and then the very last part deals with um, how they're handling the trial uh, the actual verdict and a part of um, their later on life in imprisonment right before they're sent to the gallows um, there are a lot of breaks within each chapter so really to me it read like a huge um, you know, 350 page long New Yorker article. So if you're someone who likes reading long articles like such as those in New Yorker, or you like um, reading investigative journalism or long essay type of articles, um, this is a book in very similar form. So about the actual crime, this whole book um, is Truman Capote um, in a very comprehensive but still objective way, um, telling a story but without making it sound like a story. The crime happened um, in November of 1959, so um, it was a quadruple homicide. Four members of a family were found inside their homes, um, their hands were bound, and they were shot at close range with a shotgun and this was something that happened in a very small town in the middle of Kansas itself in the middle of the United States so it's it's hard grasping like the just the geological nature of this because this is in the center of the entire country and yet uh, still in the middle of nowhere where nothing like this has ever happened in the history of the town, like in the whole recorded history ever. Um, a lot of investigative efforts. I'm not sure if this book would have been, um, would have seen light today given the way that information is, is, is exchanged and involved. I'm not sure if one actual reporter or um, 
um, a journalist uh, or a writer would be given such full access or be willing to spend years and years of their own time talking to everybody in the town, talking to the prisoners themselves um, in the later years when, when they were waiting for their uh, death penalty to be implemented. So the crime itself is horrendous, but the way that um, the book reads, it's very engrossing and Truman Capote is really good at the hook, which is like right before each break of the book, um, something new um, in, in, in the plot thickens a little bit or some new development is occurring and I was pretty hooked by page 30 and you know that something is going to happen but it's it's not actually like a thriller again and we really get to see the killers up front and personal and I think if you're interested in um, crime fiction or Truman Capote or this case um, the Holcomb um, quadruple homicide or just there have been very similar types of you know one season shows on Netflix I think there was one uh, about a cop in Minnesota it was just just a string of rampage murders but none of them were planned and it just seemed very scattered it's kind of like that so I think this is an interesting read it's definitely fast-paced and it's got a lot of breaks so it's not like um, one huge novel that's you know 500 pages long this book, um, it is heavy because it describes scenes that are, and also you know events leading up to to these crime scenes um, themselves. So it's a um, a tad uh, detailed, but nothing um, nothing too cruel and nothing um, that is very drawn out. It's just it's very compassionately written, but still objective and comprehensive enough for to take us um, through what um, Capote is, is describing, whether it be the state of the mind of the killer, which I think is the most, uh, I don't want to use the word fascinating, but um, the most intriguing part of, of this whole book. So I've talked about um, the crime, um, talked a little bit about the killers. I think at the very end, so it doesn't actually talk about the uh, capital punishment or you know actually leading up to the gallows. This I actually found YouTubing an interview that Capote did on the the Tonight Show. I think it was still Carson that was the host. So I will link that. It was done in 1970s. So he looked a little bit older than. Uh, so this is the author Capote. He looked a little bit older than. Um, where how he is de depicted here and I think he's probably standing right outside the clutter home so this is a very nice home built by hand from um, by, by the owner himself who was one of the one of the victims this is a very hard hit thing I think it's one of the cases um, well there aren't that many cases of capital punishment um, to begin with, let's say after 1960s, so definitely a landmark um, case. And one of the, I think, uh, instances that was included in um, an article um, that was quite interesting for me. So it was talking about, so the title of the article mentioned again in this book towards the end, um, Murder Without Apparent Motive. And it was published in the American Journal of Psychiatry. So. It's really hard for prosecution to deal with these in the insanity plea itself when the killers themselves are seemingly coherent, rational, in possession um, of themselves, of morality, but something. Um, but but the, they describe a sort of a disassociation with themselves um, and just their surroundings during the moments of their. Um, of their crime, which looks like crimes of passion, but it's the it's actually the opposite of that. So in these cases, can you say this person is is insane? Not really, but they were they would qualify for that definition, just pertaining to the act. But there is a really 
in a lot of these cases, and it, it, it talks about um, uh, the two killers, uh, Perry Smith and Dick Hickok, um, in particular, as well as I think uh, um, Lowell Lee Andrews, and I think a couple of other cases at the end. So I found the last chapter um, very interesting, not only because it gives an overview of the history of um, capital punishment in Kansas, um, in the United States in the late uh, 20th century, um, but at the same time, it, it talks a little bit about um, the insanity plea and all the legal, a little bit of the legalities around that. Um, this book was compassionate enough not to include um, Capote's experiences watching the two murderers um, receive their death penalty, but um, he does describe it in the interview, which I found was very interesting. So I will link that um, for you guys too to to have a see. He he talks about um, tap dancing in the beginning of that interview, which was quite random and very jarring, considering the subject matter switches immediately. Um, but uh, I mean, the transition there is that you know he's promoting I think a docu a two part documentary and. Um, even prior to that, this is, I think, in black and white um, in the 70s. There was a movie um, in Cold Blood, I think, by the same name. I haven't watched the movie yet, but um, the, the, the comments um, say that it's a very um, intriguing film as well. So that's, um, that's a, that was a very kind of a, a sobering, not, not so much chilling, but um, a good way to wrap up my winter reading. Uh, the weather's getting warmer and I'm looking forward to a more optimistic uh, reading adventures and I wish the same to you as well. Bye.